My name is Patwani Joseph Ligege, and I am from the Transformation Division, Gender Equity Unit. So today I'm going to be talking about something that is actually, you know, um, very crucial. I know that there's been a lot of talk around issues of gender-based violence, um, having the president as well talking about it during the speech. And I think before we actually go into the whole I am a, a hashtag, I am here for you, it will be good that we also reflect upon what the president has just mentioned in the previous week. So what I want to say is the fact that I am very glad and you know, it also humbles me to note that leadership is also seeing that there is a problem within South Africa. Leadership is actually noting that there is a challenge that is actually globally. Hence, when the president was speaking, he spoke and mentioned the fact that, you know, gender-based violence has become the second pandemic, of course, having COVID, but we know that gender-based violence has been existing since back then. The question goes back to the issue of how do we then, you know, address gender-based violence? Because we see that as much as we talk about it, as much as our leadership would be talking about it, which is good, yes, but then how do we make sure that we actually change you know, how do we make sure that we actually contribute positively in terms of ending gender-based violence within our society, within our communities and globally? Of course, it goes back to the issue of us being involved as individuals. It goes back to us talking to structures. It means that different partners from different places need to actually come together. We need to unite and go back and ask ourselves the question of what should we do to actually end gender-based violence? What should we do? to end violence that we're actually experiencing within our countries, within the global spaces. And one, it talks about the issue of us looking at the social structures. Because if you don't look at the structures, then it's actually you know, the same as when you actually look at the weed and you, you see a weed in your garden and you actually go remove the stem of the weed and then the next day the weed comes back stronger. So the important thing is for us to actually go back and address the root cause you know, remove the entire root and be able to actually get rid of, you know, the weed. So at the end of the day, it takes us back to the issue of let us talk about our structures. Let us find ways in which we actually talk of issues of changing the structure, change things on the structural level. And you might be asking yourself, why the structural levels and what are you talking about when you talk of structure? But what I'm talking about when I talk about structure, I'm talking about the family structure. You know, how do we actually socialize our children? How do we socialize our boy children? How do we socialize our girl children and make sure that they are, you know, they're groomed in a different way, in a way that actually sees us as equal individuals, not the other part saying that, you know what, I'm actually better than you because I'm actually a male, or you know what, I'm not better because I'm a female. Let us also talk about the issue of the church or the religion, the religious structures. How do we actually implement, how do we execute our everyday interaction between individuals or between members. We need to look at the structures like that. How do we also engage as a community as well? You know, let us go back and look at those structures and be able to say, how can we positively change and make sure that we don't see violence going further? We don't actually get, you know, young boys actually perpetuating violence or, you know, um, people actually perpetuating rape culture and things like that. So those are the different structures. And I mean, the structures are way beyond, but we need to go back into how do we then create a new culture, a culture that actually promotes safety, a culture that actually, you know, perpetuates happiness so that when we come into these platforms, we are happy. You know, we contribute positively towards development, which is economically, socially, and otherwise. So that is the whole point of us saying, let us also go back to the structure. Of course, we cannot ignore the fact that we need to also be reactive. Reactive coming from a point where we talk about issues of if somebody was to report, how do we make sure that we support them? You know, let us talk about the prevention part of it. Let us also talk about, you know, the care and support that is also there. Let us also talk about the legal systems. You know, let us also talk about those systems that are also there to make sure that um, if, if there's a problem, then justice is also served as well. We need to also have that. But at the end of the day, what is also important is to go back to the issue of changing structures and bettering our structure. So as I move on to the hashtag, I am here for you. You might be asking yourself, why the campaign hashtag, I am here for you? But what really influenced the hashtag, I am here for you, was mainly because three weeks back, if not two weeks back, there was something that was training on Twitter. And when it was training on Twitter, it was actually a 
trend around the issue of hashtag why I didn't report. And the things that were coming there or the posts that were actually being posted or the tweets that were posted on Twitter were around the fact that, you know what, the fact that I didn't report gender-based violence or the fact that I didn't tell anybody about my situation was mainly because I feared that somebody would judge me. I feared that somebody would actually look at me and start asking me, what were you actually doing? You know, I actually feared the fact that nobody would actually believe me. Uh, I feared the fact that somebody would actually just victimize me further. You know, I fear that somebody would then just say to me, but that's not really true, you know? And I, I mean, it goes back to the issue of how we also engage with one another. Sometimes as people, we actually talk and we are very judgmental in our tone. When somebody tells you about something that is serious to them and then we just actually just say, oh, really? Or we take it for, for granted. You know, it's that tone that actually becomes problematic. So we need to then find a way of actually creating a safe space where people could come through and be able to share with us. And in sharing, we then become empathetic. In sharing, we then become responsive and be able to support them. So that is why we thought, you know, as a university, we need to definitely respond to this. We need to actually remind individuals within the community to actually take a pledge and take a stand. You know, we need to make sure that we ourselves we're going to create this space where individuals will come through and feel that there's hope that somebody will actually listen, listen without any judgment, listen in a very empathetic way, provide with the care and support to their best ability, you know, speak up as well when they actually listen, I mean, or listen to a story so that it shouldn't just be a thing where somebody comes and report your case and we do nothing about it. But somebody would then say, you know what, I understand. Let me actually refer you to an office that actually deals with that. You know, let me actually maybe perhaps talk to somebody that would be able to, to support us. And at the same time, also look at the issue of how do we build, you know, a safe zone, a safe uh, platform for people to actually come through and be able to report. Because as much as we can talk about the issue of, yes, we are here as a university, you know, to support you, or I'm here as a person to actually support you. Let us also make sure that we also create this safe environment, an environment that is very inclusive, that will protect, that will also be safe for people to come through without actually feeling that they will be judged or they'll be turned away. You know, let us also be the shoulder that somebody could cry on. You know, somebody where you, somebody will come through and you will listen in a very empathetic way without being judgmental and let the person just be, you know, be that shoulder where somebody would actually come and feel that they're safe, you know, in your presence and not feel otherwise. And that is when we said, you know, it is indeed uh, the ease and need to make sure that we actually bring this particular campaign forth. But another thing that we also need to look at is the fact that the particular pledge also is a reminder to our victims and survivors to say, even in the spaces where it's very uncomfortable, we as a university are here to support you. We as a university, as a division, as different departments, as faculties, are here to support you. We are here to provide the care and support that you need to receive. We are here to walk with you, you know, be with you. And it's just a reminder for you to say that we are going to support you if you come through and report the case. We're going to support you, whether it's through the need for support, whether it's through the need for prosecution and investigations to take, it, to take place. We are going to make sure that we support you accordingly. And you might be asking yourself that, you know, in a case, if something happens, and this is where I always talk about my prayer, my prayer in terms of, you know what, I pray that nobody should go through this terrible ordeal. Nobody should actually go through, um, you know, being experiencing violence. Nobody should go in a place of experience, you know, a form of gender-based violence. Because unfortunately, I myself cannot take a paintbrush and just paint away the experience. You know, you yourself cannot actually just take an eraser and say, I'm just going to erase this memory. I'm just going to erase this experience. It is that unfortunate. And for us, one case is enough. We do not want to see anybody being violated. We do not want to see anybody experiencing any form of gender-based violence. We want to see a society that is free of any kind of violence, any kind of you know, gender-based violence. And we would like to say that let us then create the safe space for everybody. But of course, it also starts with me. It also starts with you. Where we take a stand and we say that I, as an individual, will definitely support and I will definitely stand up when somebody is being violated. You know, it actually reminds me of something that I was watching yesterday when some, um, one young woman said to, to the panel, at the end of the day, 
if I have to defend somebody, I will die for that defense. You know, it shouldn't get to a point where we actually have to defend people. We actually have to create a safe environment that is actually safe and it's free of violence. But in the case where we are coming back to the issue of if something was to happen, and I was still saying that the prayer, you know, the prayer is nobody should experience it. But in any way, if it happens, perhaps you know a friend that is actually experiencing gender-based violence, perhaps you are going through some kind of challenges, you can actually reach out to us. As much as we're still working remotely, we are here to support you. Our offices are still operational, operational even though we are far. So, for example, you can always um, contact us at the Gender Equity Unit, um, you know, the Transformation Division, via our email, which is gender at uj.ac.za. We can also go to the Protection Services Division. They are operational 24-7. They are actually operational on campus. You can go to the APK office. They'll be able to assist you, and they will refer the case to us. You can go to the DFC. You can go to the APB. You can also go to the Soweto campus, and they are always going to support you and be able to refer you back to our office. Remember that we also have the psychic crisis line as well. And you can always, you know, call them and they'll be able to support you and refer you back to our office. And the crisis um, line um, is actually the 082 054 Remember that we also have other resources that are also external. This talks to now the GBV Command Center. If you actually want to call the command center, you can do that and they'll be able to also support you, which means you can call them on 0800-428-428 or you can also send an SMS with the word help to 12 star 120 star 7867 hash and they'll be able to assist you and respond accordingly. So what I want to say before I close is that it takes um, as we as an individual have the responsibility, we as different individuals within the space, we all have responsibilities to bring gender-based violence to an end. We shouldn't be waiting for governmental structures, we shouldn't be waiting for institutions to do something, but let us also make it a mandate that we ourselves stand up and be able to support people. Let us make it a point that we are actually creating a safe space, a space that is free from violence, let us also make sure that we stand up and say that enough is enough. We don't want to see any of the violence within our society. We don't want to see any of the gender-based violence taking place within our society. And that's what it brings me to um, the end of you know, my talk. So, uh, Renika, I'm not sure if there are any questions that I need to respond to. Um, let me know so that I can talk about uh, or respond to the different questions that are coming through. Thank you so much, Fatwani. Are there any questions on the chat, Palesa? Okay, so there's um, a question and it's, uh, the question is, can you please go deeper in terms of the root cause? So what I was saying in terms of the root cause was the fact that the root causes, we know that they are actually social drivers to this pandemic that has been mentioned by the president. And some of these issues are very social. Some of these issues are very embedded in, in social structures. Let us talk about the issue of masculinity. Let us talk about the issue of patriarchy. Let us talk about the family structure as well. The structure that talks about religion, the legal structures as well. So what we need to do is that looking at those different structures, of course, these are not all the structures. There's more than this, you know, and we know that even um, the president spoke about the issue of alcohol and some other people still debate and say, but alcohol is not really maybe perhaps something that drives, but we know that after the opening of the sale of alcohol, there were a lot of cases that were reported. But what I'm actually going back to is let us go back to our structures and actually tackle our structures. Let us change them. Let us transform them. You know, when we talk of issues of uh, patriarchy, or let us talk of issues of masculinity, let us find men coming together, you know, and say, actually saying that, you know what, if we as the male population, if we as a brotherhood were to come together and find a way in terms of actually teaching each other, you know, that we respect women, we respect each other, that even when you are angry, you don't actually resort through, uh, towards, uh, you know, you don't use a violence to actually now you end the argument. But also, let us call out each other and say, you know what, if somebody or if your brother um, within the brotherhood is actually perpetuating, a, you know, for example, 
um, rape culture or even GBV culture. Let us call them out to say, no, you cannot be saying that. That forms part of rape culture and we know what happens when that happens. So let us also call each other out. And I also mentioned the issue of the family to say that if we're talking about the family, let us also look at the way we socialize our children. Because in most cases, how many times have we actually seen that, um, you know, when a boy child actually goes back home crying, um, in most cases, the mom or the parent will actually say, why are you crying? And when they say to you, um, I'm actually crying because somebody hit me and they say, go back and fight. You know, that is the whole mentality that we see in our families where people are being told, go fight. You know, resolve the issue through fighting, resolve the issue through violence. Whereas we can always say, okay, my child, um, there's no problem. Maybe call, go call him so that we can actually talk about this thing and be able to resolve it without actually fighting. Let us go into the regional spaces as well and talk about the issues that happen as well behind that space. You know, how do we engage with one another as women and men and even people within the LGBT community? where you find that in most cases, people, women are always told you need to come into space and obey. Unfortunately, you don't have a word, which means even when something happens, even when people come through and say that I actually have, for example, challenges within my marriage, you're just told you just have to actually go back home and pray about it and God will answer that. You know, let us change the way things are done. Why don't we actually create this platform where we'll then call the family to say, let us talk about this. Let us call out the person that is perpetuating harm. Let us actually talk to the person that actually is actually causing any uh, difficulties to the next person. When we talk of the legal and also the, you know, the systems regarding our police services, judiciary and all those different things, we know that there are also challenges. How do we then make sure that we prepare our services to respond accordingly without actually causing secondary victimization, without actually causing you know, doubt whenever a person comes through and reports and says that I've been violated, I've been victimized. How do we make sure that the spaces are actually spaces where people could come and just report and you'll be able to listen and investigate accordingly without actually having to dismiss their case and things like that. So those are the things that I'm talking about to say, let us go back to our structures and see how we can actually fix them. Because at the end of the day, reactiveness, yes, we can do that. But what about the structures at the back? The structure is where we still go back and you know report some of these cases, um, expecting that we'll be actually assisted. So we need to make sure that our structures are also transforming. You know, things are being done in a different way. So um, we are going to be hosting more talks and already we are hosting different talk, talks uh, from the transformation division with our partners as well. So be on the lookout on the social media platforms uh, where we talk about different issues pertaining gender-based violence and how we can actually support and make sure that we eradicate gender-based violence and violence um, overall. So uh, be on the lookout for more topics that will be coming through in the next coming week where we'll be talking about issues of um, how to survive as a survivor. How do we you know, support that individual who's actually a survivor or a victim? And what are some of the things that you should be aware of uh, when you're a survivor? And we'll also look at the issue of how do we make sure that we ourselves don't become perpetrators. We ourselves don't get survived by other people because you know how they always say that usually people are surviving their perpetrators. So we're going to be talking about that and we're going to be talking about more topics. So um, do join us the coming weeks and be on the lookout of different and dynamic topics that will also come through from our side uh, as well. So it's on the platform, uh, which is the library, UJ Library Talks, and also from the Transformation Facebook as well. Thank you, Fatwani, and thank you to the Transformation Unit bringing the talks to the UJ Library platform. The University of Johannesburg, the future reimagined.